Well, conceptual art is just art based around an idea, a concept. And it's not necessarily painting or sculpture in a traditional sense, but it can be. But it's usually about, about an artist that has a fixed idea of something, or wants to explore a specific idea, either formally or in terms of politics or whatever. And that's what I, I suppose I'm a conceptual artist. Sure, sure. But in a very messy way, a lot of conceptual art is quite, um, traditional conceptual art is actually quite austere, very simple almost in its presentation, but my work is not. My work is like a lot more complicated and sort of chaotic. You do sort of a lot of conceptual art around war. How would you sort of... Well, I wouldn't say I do conceptual art around war. I do work around war. Right. I'm not a conceptual... If I was a conceptual artist making work about war, that would be all I do. Sure, But sure. I don't. So I do sort of... I do tons of things. Yeah. But I have made three, well, three works around conflicts. Well, maybe more than three. Conflicts, two of which specifically are around specific wars, as it were. Yeah. Um, just because conflict is a great subject matter for anything, for theatre, literature, film, video games. Conflict is what human beings are interested in. Um, and you say work sort of with a concept sort of sparking an idea. Where does that normally come from for you? Where what is sort of the point where you think, okay, I want to explore this further? Well, sometimes you're asked, you know, would you be interested in? Uh, well, for example, with this project, the one about the Somme. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was asked to think about the Somme and how it could be commemorated, and I because they were having the organisers didn't really know what to do with the Somme. Do you commemorate a disaster? How does that work? And I just thought to myself, I gave it a little bit of thought, and then I just thought, oh, I know what I'd like to do. If I'd like, I know what I'd like to see. I'd like to see this happen around Britain. Not necessarily me doing it, but anyone doing it. So it just occurred to me when I was cycling. So that was something. The work with the car, the bombed out car going around America, that was uh, that came through being nominated for the Fourth Plinth. Trafalgar Square and I suggested right. a, a blown up car or a car that had been blown up in a bomb attack and that didn't uh, didn't win but it started the process so often it's just like well what would I like to see what would I think would be good to do for this and then the idea comes if you're lucky. In terms of the, the bomb car how did you go about getting hold of it? Well initially I thought I'd have to go to Iraq to find the car to source it and uh, that was going to be very complicated. I was advised not to go. And then someone heard that I wanted to get a car and do this with it. And he'd actually got two cars out of Iraq, took him a year for a different project he was doing, uh, this literature project. And he said, you can have one if you want, because I don't need it. We're going to, we don't know what to do with it. So I just got this car without going to Iraq and then took it across America with an American soldier and a Iraqi citizen. We would just turn up in places and um, discuss the war, discuss the car, whatever people wanted to talk about in the streets. Did you have like very varied responses to that? Was it kind of very varied or did you get sort of hear similar things kind of over and over again? Well what you hear is that people usually what they do is when they see that they'll relate it to their own lives whether they've been in the army or relatives yeah. or about something that's happened to them, politics at the time, religion. So a lot of the time it became very personal with discussions. And uh, of course we talked about politics a lot with people. Mm. But it was a, a kind of interesting time in America because Obama had just been made president. And things had calmed down a lot in terms of the, the rhetoric. And so it's probably a good time to go. People would, were willing to speak. Nowadays, if you do a big art project, it's almost demanded of you that you have a web presence and you document it and you film it and you do this and you do that. And so it's part of the deal, really. And um, I actually don't document a lot of the work. I, other people document it and it just happens. And, but we felt it would be important to film some of the journey that we were taking just to see what happened and talk to people. But we did it in a quite a low-key way and it was important to just hear what people had to say about stuff. We got some amazing responses from people, some amazing interviews, and very short most of them about their lives and what they've gone on with their lives. You know, people that've been to Iraq, people that were in Vietnam, the war there, all sorts of people. It was good. It was really, uh, it was very helpful. 
when you set out on something like that, can you sort of foresee how you think it's going to go as you go down that route and the sort of answers you're going to get, or is it kind of, does it surprise you? Well, with that, with the car going across America, we had no idea. We actually thought we might get attacked, physically attacked for doing it, right. and okay. verbally abused at least, mm -hmm. and maybe shot at or beaten up or whatever. Yeah. We had no idea because we went through very Republican areas, very traditionally right-wing areas. Yeah where people you'd have thought wouldn't want to see that or talk about the war. But we didn't. We actually had a really interesting time in those places and people were really interested in us and what we were doing. So it was, luckily, we were okay. Um, but I didn't know what was going to happen with that. With this, with the project with the soldiers last year, the Somme project, we're here because we're here. When I had the idea, I had it absolutely as it happened a year, three years later. I knew exactly what I wanted and how it was going to look, and it more or less looked exactly as I hoped. So, it was a commission, wasn't it? So, yeah. you didn't find that restrictive at all, it was very still what you wanted. On the whole, I, when it comes to commissions, yeah. I get what I want. Good. <laughs> I can tell people what I want, yeah. and on the whole, they trust you. It was uncompromising in a lot of ways, it cost a lot of money to do, a lot of money and we didn't pr promote it beforehand or publicise it, so there was no advanced publicity, so no one knew it was going to happen. Which is a big risk, because everyone wants to like, let everyone know this is happening. And we said, I said, no, this is a really absolute secret. And it was, and that's why it was so effective, I think. Um, how did you find public response to that, with it being a secret? Did, it, did people react in how you would have Well, because they weren't expecting it, their reaction was genuine and it was primary. They weren't primed for it, so they just saw it uh, there and then and reacted to it in a very, often very visceral or very raw way, emotionally. A lot of people were crying and I didn't expect that at all, but they were, it was a shock or a surprise at least to people and that was good. These people were not performing, they were doing something else, I can't quite work out what it was, but they were, they were definitely dressed in a uniform and being a person. With your um, art, do you try and place yourself inside the artwork, as in, say, Rembrandt and Caravaggio can be seen? No, I don't really do. I'm not really like them. <laughs> I'm not like Rembrandt. I don't appear in the work. No. I don't appear in it. Why is that? Because I don't want to get in the way of it. Right. It's a barrier to the understanding of it if the artist sort of pops up in it. Yeah. yeah. You know? Also, these people are doing something, and if I was in it, all the all the attention would be on me dressed as a soldier mm. rather than mm. everyone else. Well, that's so, kind of the opposite of the point of what exactly. you're trying to convey. It would be like showing off almost. It's yeah. look at my art as opposed to look at the art. Or look at me. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah, yeah. So that was really important not to appear in it sure. and be a bit invisible. Going back to what you were saying about performance art um, in terms of it is what it is, you took that around America and then it was placed stationary in um, a gallery, wasn't it? Some museums, museum. and that's an Imperial War Museum. Yeah. The contrast between the two, was there a significant difference between taking it around and leaving it stationary? Very big difference. Yeah. It's a big difference. As soon as you put something in a museum, people treat it as an artwork. Yeah, it's an expected sort of Yeah, response. and they see, and they interpret the car as a sculpture rather than as a mm -hmm. blown up car. So it's mm -hmm. very different. In the Imperial War Museum it's different because the context is a a museum of warfare about yeah. war in the twentieth century, so that's different. But it, as soon as you put it in a museum, it just goes. You lose control of the interpretation, really, and it becomes aestheticized. Sure, sure. And I don't like that. So it's better outside than in. Mm. Just reminders, really. You said about phrases. What about sort of uh, the titles? They're very sort of blunt. Is that? Yeah. Do you so there we go. This is an idea of page almost. Oh, that's right. what I was doing. Eye contact, accusing, exhausted, and intervention. This time I was really struggling with this and that actually, well, this especially. And then I heard about a song that was sung by the soldiers. We're here because we're here because we're here because we're here. Uh, to the chin of old Lang Syne, and I just thought, oh, that's a really good time. Um, because no they're not really explaining anything, just saying we're here, and because we're here, you know, and uh, that's all we're going to tell you. Do you think if you toured it today, um, with what some people are calling the war on terror, do you think there would be a different reaction? 
depends where the car had been destroyed, what was circumstances right. were. If it had been destroyed in a bomb attack in Paris, as opposed to Baghdad, I think people would get, or Jerusalem, people would see it differently. It depends on the context.